we have somehow found ourselves in a situation in this country where if anyone dares to query what the referendum the ref vote means or to voice their concerns about the practical application of the Brexiteers' hard red lines, they are immediately labelled as a mutineer, a saboteur or a traitor. Professor Minford pointed to research which he believes shows that if the UK walked away from the customs union and entered into lots of free trade agreements around the world, our economy could instead grow by about that amount. But when asked by the committee to point to any free trade agreements that have delivered that size of gain to any other country, he admitted there are no precedents. There are no precedents. So the UK is being asked to experiment at other people's whims with a new trade policy when they have no idea what the costs or impact will be for people and businesses in this country. It is a subject of complete bafflement that under the guise and under the wholly misleading language of free trade and global Britain, actually the Brexiteers now want to lead us towards the rocks of protectionism. Because be under absolutely no doubt, it doesn't matter what model the government chooses, it makes no difference. Every single one of those alternatives is a huge reduction in trade compared to the seamless, open, uh, limitless trade we now have in our own hemisphere with our large markets. Given the huge distance now between what seems to be in prospect uh, uh, in being delivered to the British people uh, by the government compared to what they were promised in the summer of 2016, it is why I and many others have also arrived at the conclusion that in the end, this will need to be uh, something that the British people decide on in a people's vote, rather than being simply left to politicians in Westminster and Whitehall. There are fundamental questions about life after Brexit that are not answered. And frankly, I am alarmed at the state of the negotiations, the perils facing our economy, including companies like this one, and the real and rising prospect of Britain crashing out of the EU with no Brexit deal at all. There is confusion, contradiction, and division where there needs to be cool logic. There is wishful thinking where there needs to be hard-headed realism. And there is tactical maneuvering when what is needed is strategic clarity. After the referendum, there was room for reconciliation. But two years on from the referendum, we have no unity at all on the basics. We have no negotiating position on customs arrangements. We have no negotiating position on regulatory standard setting. We have no negotiating position on matters like the regulatory oversight of nuclear material, which is governed by the European agency Euratom. And on the Irish border, there are actually two negotiating positions which are in direct contradiction with each other. We, the UK, are for an open border, but we're against the customs union and maintaining regulatory alignment for goods, which is the only credible way to achieve that openness. That our membership of the EU doesn't just give us access to the markets of 27 other European countries, it also gives us access, privileged access, to the markets with whom Europe has negotiated trade deals. Countries like South Korea, Switzerland, and Canada. In total, 60% of our trade is either with Europe or with countries with whom the EU has negotiated trade agreements. It is not selling Britain short to recognize that even if we leave the European Union, we are stronger in close tandem with the European Union. Europe is our continent, whether or not we're in the EU. I confess, I wish we weren't leaving the EU. I think it's reasonable to say that the final deal should be put to the people. But that's not the issue today. If we are to leave, then let's do so in a measured, sensible, pragmatic way. That's what the debate about the customs union and the single market are fundamentally about. Mm. The greatest source of division and betrayal will be a Brexit that impoverishes the country. And great countries are great precisely because they recognize when national interest needs to trump party interest. And I believe now is such a time. Thank you very much indeed.